Dick Rickles here. <laughs> Yes. Are people who own swords cool? No. <laughs> <laughs> what a champ, though. It's, it's a, a bridge. It's, yeah, it's, it's a half It's a, it's built a dock, bridge. actually. The 1940s in Nazi Germany. Oh my god. <laughs> For instance, bisexual polyamorous goose love triangle ends in tragedy. <laughs> it just sounds a lot better when Jordan Peterson says it. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. That's the news story. So let's get a reading. Thomas, a New Zealand native, beloved father, and alternative lifestyle icon, has passed away at the age of 40. <laughs> what the fuck does this have to do with anything? Yeah, this is like <laughs> starting in media res or something. Yeah, what the fuck? This is how the obituary would read if Thomas were a human. Oh, thank God. Okay. But the famous one. Oh, you got me. You got me, IFL science. You got me. This is how the obituary would read if Thomas were a human. But, but the he's famous, not. I'm a little embarrassed now. But the famous Wellington resident was actually a goose. A blind, blind, a blind gay intraspecies polyamorous goose. Who's like, man, that is everything every Republican is afraid of. Just right there in one this, thing. This They're... is the future liberals want, you know? They want everyone to be a blind, gay, interspecies, polyamorous goose, you know? <laughs> His life story <laughs> captured the hearts of locals and the world at large. Look, this is Thomas in his later days. <laughs> this is him. I don't know. This looks like Thomas in his prime. Old Tommy boy. Look at him. stuff. <gasps> Thomas first rose to celebrity when he was a young male in the gaggle at Waimanu Lagoon. <laughs> there he was absorbed. You know, a place like Waimanu Magu Lagoon would produce a blind, polyamorous, interspecies loving <laughs> fucking goose. There he was observed shunning other geese in favor of the company of male black swan named Henry. <laughs> oh my god. I'm surprised they didn't go like way worse with the name. <laughs> Who was like documenting the like fuck circles of geese at their local pond in a to document the story? You'd be surprised yeah. at the thing people do. Like we used to watch squirrel fights. I mean, people are into weird stuff. I'm in like our vermiculture, and that's the ra that's raising worms. Yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> I mean, there's one, there's one thing that, like, A, being in nature and, like, seeing it, seeing it happen, and then, you know, there's also, of course, like, raising it and stuff like that, but who's like, oh, my soap operas are off, I better go down to the lake and see if Henry fell in love with Henrietta yet or not. <laughs> are Thomas and Henry still lovers? I bet he's like, I bet whoever this guy is, he's the talk of whatever job he's at. <laughs> Man, Hank gets all the cool jobs. He gets to go watch the... The gay geese. <laughs> the Damn it, Hank. You're the best reporter we've got. You blew the doors open on that Henry and Henrietta story a couple months back. I need you to work your magic again on a new case I got for you. <laughs> Henry has left Henrietta. And he's going <laughs> after a new bow. Did you say bow? We don't know where he's going. But it's somewhere south, and it's winter. <laughs> the couple were together for 18 happy years. 18 <laughs> happy years before a female swan, Henrietta, flew into the picture. Henry and Henrietta began to nest together, but instead of the traditional monogamous pair bond normally shared among geese and swans, Thomas stuck around and they became a dedicated triangular unit. <laughs> Look at him. Thomas leads the march across Waimanu Lagoon with his family in an undated photo, photo courtesy of Wellington Bird Rehabilitation Trust. <laughs> like, I just wanted to fact check real quick. Only about 44% of waterfowl species are monogamous. Just saying. Oh, okay. It's really that's, important we get the facts straight yeah, on this love triangle more, about yeah, Key Story. Minute. Yeah. This seems way more damn it. When was this, when did this come out? February 9th. Okay, so it was more like a Valentine's Day thing than a pride appeal thing. Fake news. Thomas was invested uh, was an invested parent to Henry and Henrietta's 68 signets over the next 12 years. Holy shit, man could get it. During which time the family was a regular and much cherished shite at the Waimanu. <laughs> Henry passed away in 2009. 
After which, Henrietta found a new partner, and Thomas finally tried mating with a female goose. Tragically, the young goslings were adopted by a different male, leaving Thomas alone once more. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Did, he put, did, did the like Child Protective Services take them off him? Was he like, <laughs> drinking too much because he lost Henrietta? And like, I don't know. Maybe he just decided he didn't want kids. That's you know what? Okay, you know what? I get that. Good, good for Thomas. Good for knowing what he wants, discussing it with his partner, and coming to a, an arrangement. <laughs> when he became blind in both eyes in 2013, Thomas was brought to the nearby Wellington Bird Rehabilitation Trust to pass his remaining years. And in 2000, and then about oh yeah, about four years ago, uh, it is with a heavy heart we announced the passing of our beloved blind goose Thomas. Thomas, in his almost 40 years of life, made God an impact damn. on many people in their lives. 40 years, holy shit! Damn, I didn't, I didn't know they had that kind of longevity. I didn't either. <clears throat> That's like. If you're an old person, don't get a goose. You're out they're not living you, dude. Not you know, uh, if you if you have a problem with Canadian geese, you have a problem with me, and I suggest you let that one marinate in beef stew. <laughs> <laughs> Made an impact on many people in their lives. While we have cared for, loved, and cherished him in recent years, Thomas originally befriend, befriended and made a name for himself with the lovely residents at the Waimanu Lagoon in Wa... Wa oh my god, Waikane, mm -hmm. who watched over him for more than 25 plus years. Aw, look at the buddy. Look at this sick album cover in the bottom right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's great. Uh, rest Sweet in power, King. King. King Lizard and uh, King Wizard and the Gaze Lizard King. <laughs> Lizard Gizzard. I love yeah. King I love them. <laughs> They're fucking great. They're great. And now here's the part. Okay. Homosexuality has been widely documented in the animal kingdom. 1,500 known species display this behavior, and more cases are likely to be discovered. Luckily for them, there is no indication that homophobia exists outside of human. Gay geese do not need to defend their behavior. It is natural. Oh, that their behavior is natural to other swans. Thomas' multi-partner multi inclinations are also no oddity in nature. They made it sound like it was a big deal. Oh, anyway. Significant mm -hmm. evidence of polyamorous behavior, not to mention polygendered individuals, has been recently observed. Prompting biologists like Antonia Forster to keep challenging our understanding of sexuality. And why did you write a whole article about it? Hmm. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong; those those points of th those points are accurate. That's factual. Like, mm -hmm. the animal kingdom does not give a shit about multi partners or or gender like preference, sexual preference. But like, why did you write a whole article about this one goose that defied the the, the system and was? polyamorous and, yeah. and gay yeah it feels like you could have mentioned and like a whole bunch of cases of this and interspecies yeah. and interspecies and, well, and, that was and blind yeah okay. you know yeah. Tom Tom had a lot going for him yeah <laughs> I'm surprised Blizzard didn't hire him so that they could base their whole like uh, uh, what is it the sensitivity the inclusion data <laughs> algorithm around him <laughs>